Hello, everyone. This is Adam, and、um, this is the Adam Sixties Podcast, Episode One, October thirtieth, twenty twenty-two. Yeah, so it's it's mischief night. That's what we called it in New Jersey, where I'm from. October thirtieth, the day before Halloween.、Um, it's also Grace Slick's eighty-third birthday. Happy birthday, Grace! One of my favorite singers. Or I should say, musical artists.、Um, yeah, I first got her album in 1980,、uh, summer of 1980. I got it. I think, yeah, I got it from、uh, a New York City record store, LP. Of course, back then, I got the her、um, after bathing at Baxter's, the Jefferson Airplane album, and I also got the. Her Great Society double album, and that was my introduction to her when I was 16. It was,、uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, after, ever since then, I became a huge Airplane fan. I was able to see her them. I was able to see the Starship in 1981, the Dr Pepper Music Festival in New York, the Pier. Um, and then I saw the reunion in 1989 at the airplane reunion、uh, at the、um, uh, Radio City Music Hall. <laughs> yep. So yeah, I'm. A, you know, this is like a '60s oriented podcast, but that's not. Ex- you know, it's basically whatever I decide to talk about. I'm not going to limit myself, but. Yeah, I'm into '60s culture, '60s music, but actually, I was thinking I'm going to start this first episode, the theme、uh, as Richard Richard Burton and Liz Taylor, the、uh, their movies of Richard Burton and Liz Taylor, because they're two of my favorite actors, and you know they had the Marriage of the Century. I, you know, and there's a good book I just audible, The Furious Love. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, and Marriage of the Century. It's by Sam Kashner and Nancy Schoenberger, and yeah, I'd recommend it. It's a, you know, because being an expert in that sub that topic, you know, it's a good book even for an expert like me. <laughs> well, self-professed expert, but、um, yeah. So like they they met on the set of Cleopatra. Well,、uh, let me. Actually, I didn't meet first time, but they, that's when they started the romance. <laughs> the set of the Cleopatra. Yeah, I think they met like ten years before that.、Uh, the set of Cleopatra. That was in the filming was 1962. And、um, sorry, I'm just giving my cat a greenie here.、Um, yeah, and that was like the biggest blockbuster. Most expensive movie ever made, and I think it wasn't even released or something. I forget the specifics, but you know, it was like a four-hour movie, and it didn't do well. And you know, also because Liz Taylor had converted to Judaism, I guess part because of her marriage to、um, I don't know, was it Mike Todd or was it Eddie Fisher? I, yeah. Well, she was married to both of them, but anyway,、um, yeah. So, so Egypt. I know Egypt boycotted that movie.、Um, I all these movies I saw at least once, but most of them more than once. Yeah, that was. It gets kind of grueling after three hours or so. Yeah, the Cleopatra, but you know, it's definitely worth watching. You know, one of those epics like you know the Ten Commandments. The Demille type epic,、uh, but the next film after that, the first film they made when they were married was the VIPs. I think that was around the time they got married.、Um, I, you know, it's weird because that was a good. It's not. It wasn't a good film. I thought a lot of people think it's a great film, but I. Because every all the elements were there of a great film, the great actors. It was Liz Taylor, Richard Burton,、uh, Louis Jordan,、um, Maggie Smith, Rod Taylor, Orson Welles, and many others. It's like a- 
Oh yeah, so I was talking about the VIPs.、Um, it was based on a true story of Vivian Leigh trying to leave her husband Laurence Olivier. Vivian Leigh was, you know, the actress in、um, Gone with the Wind. You know the, you know the famous actress, and then Laurence Olivier. Was her? Yeah, she was married to him. She was going to leave him for Peter Finch, supposedly,、uh, who was yeah. These are all Academy Award-winning actors,、um, and it was in a London airport Heathrow,、uh, and then the plane was delayed, so there was a.、Uh, there was it was delayed due to fog, just like in the movie, and so they ended up. Stopping the plan, and you know, she's in other words, she stayed with Laurence Olivier. So that's what the movie is about, or it's based on that. But I don't think the movie was it worked really, even though it had all those stars, you know, and、uh, you know, had. I think the script was the issue. It was too unbelievable. There were too many ridiculous aspects to the script. They had Rod Taylor as. Someone trying to get money from Orson Welles,、uh, who had this fake accent, and no, sorry, it was Richard Burton who was the the fa- the、uh, rich one, and then、uh, Rod Taylor's secretary <laughs> just asked him for three hundred thousand dollars. He says, "Okay, no problem." Just as a total stranger, <laughs> that was yeah. It, it, it had a bunch of ridiculous aspects like that.、Um, anyway, yeah, the movie. A lot of people criticize Liz Taylor and Richard Burton for the movies they made while they were together. You know, as far as the quality,、um, I think that one is particularly lacking in quality. It was hit and miss. Their films were hit and miss. The ones they made together, but、uh, the next one they made together was The Sandpiper. That was filmed in 1964, which is the year of my birth.、Um, oh yeah, I just want to mention. Today is October thirtieth, Mischief Night, and、um, I just checked. And the most likely date of my conception is October thirtieth, nineteen sixty-three, which would be so. Today would be the fifty-eighth anniversary of that. <laughs> no, sorry, the fifty-ninth anniversary of that. But、um, you know, so I the, technically I was alive during JFK's presidency. <laughs> Even though, you know, I wasn't born until、uh, LBJ was president. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I might be taking some tangents like that. So, so just be prepared. You could skip over them. That's the thing with podcasts. You could skip over whatever you want to.、Um, anyway, let's see. Oh yeah, the next film was Sandpiper, and that was. Another one that the critics didn't particularly like, but I liked it, even though it was another unbelievable scenario because <laughs> Richard Burton played a priest, or he was wearing, you know, one of those frocks, whatever they call them, priests wear.、Uh, but then he has an affair with Liz Taylor, who's like this artist hippie, a bohemian, and it was all filmed in Big Sur, and it was the, you know, this was the '60s. And they tried to depict the countercultural aspect of California in the '60s. At that, time, that was like early '60s, '64, so not quite the hippie period, pre-hippie period, I guess.、Um, actually, Rich, <laughs> Charles Bronson was cast as one of the Bohemians. <laughs>、uh, I don't know if that was miscast or not, but I was glad. You know, it's good to see him. It, it, you know, an early film with him in it. You know, because he what he didn't.、Uh, Charles Bronson didn't become a superstar until Death Wish, which was seventy four, ten years later.、Um, yeah, I mean, but Charles Bronson, I think, was better known in Europe than in the U.S. until Death Wish. Had, you know, he made a whole bunch of great films in Europe, which I could go into later. Oh yes,、yeah, so Charles Bronson starred in *Rider on the Rain* in 1969. That's 
that is my favorite Charles Bronson film. Um, where, and that was like set in France, where he played. You know, it was it was very, it was kind of an art. It was an art film, I would say. Um, and you know, actually, Jim Morrison saw it, and supposedly it inspired him to write uh, *Riders on the Storm*. Uh, and yeah, because the theme, you know, if you the lyrics are at least the first verse is kind of like the plot. Uh, there's a killer on the road. His brain is squirming like a toad. If you give this man a ride, sweet memory will die. So that's you know, it's about a killer on the road or a rapist on the road anyway. Um, but that's that's actually. A sub theme that I mean, the main part of the movie is Charles Bronson with、um, the actress, the French actress. I forget her name.、I、interesting thing about that is、uh, that they du- they filmed it in both French and English. Even though Charles Bronson didn't know French, he、uh, he learned the、uh, the words. You know, so he could say the words, even though his voice was dubbed over anyway. He wanted to say the words, so it won't, it wouldn't look like he was dubbed. Yeah, even though he didn't know French, that's so he, you know, that's like a committed actor who would do that. But obviously, most people don't do that if they're if they're going to be dubbed. They don't care about the language.、Um, oh yeah, Marlene Jobert is the、uh, was the actress who played the. French woman. The, yeah, those were the two stars.、Uh, anyway, going back to the Richard Burton, Liz Taylor thing.、Um, yes. So, which one was I at? I, oh yeah, the、um, Sandpiper. So, it was interesting because it was big. It was filmed on Big Sur. You know, and the fact that it was filmed in '64. To me, is very significant. Like that point in time, where the whole '60s is an important, as important、uh, period. You know, important moment of time, and these films capture that moment for all eternity, <laughs> or at least for all of human history. Anyway. So any anyway, the the critics weren't too happy with his their first films, the first two films together.、Uh, actually, their first three films together, and then they did the they blew the critics away with Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, and that was in sixty. It was filmed starting in sixty five into sixty six. Yeah, that was their magnum opus as far as acting, as far as filmmaking with Mike、uh, Mike Nichols, the, the director. This, that was his first movie. I think it was Liz Taylor who was kind of in charge of it. She, you know, she read the play、uh, by Edward Albee, said, "Oh, yeah, the play blew her away," and she said, "I got to make this movie, and I want."、Uh, Mike Nichols to direct it. <laughs> I think that's how it went down.、Um, yeah, and Mike Nichols, luckily, I think, did not、um, do it in studio. It, you know, since he didn't know about movie directing, this was his first film. He decided to do it on location in Massachusetts at some college town. I think that、uh, helps the movie so much versus like doing it in a Hollywood studio. They actually did it on location. I guess they did a little of it in the in the studio, but、um, yeah, I mean, it just had that realism to it, and it was filmed in black and white. I don't know about that、um, decision. You know, this was in the in the early '60s or mid '60s was the big transition from black and white to color. Including TV and movies, everything was switching from black and white to color, and for some reason they decided to go with black and white. Even though this was a very expensive, well-funded film,、uh, there was one particular scene where they're in the backyard. Richard Burton.
Oh, yes. So uh, Edward Albee wrote Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? That was his, definitely his greatest play. And supposedly he wrote it with no revisions. He just wrote it in a stream of consciousness type method. And um, yeah, 1962 was the Broadway um, premiere and it starred Uta Hagen, famous actor, actress who taught acting. And then uh, the guy who played George was later in the Andromeda strain. Uh, on the movie, it was Sandy Dennis who played Honey, the supporting role. And she went on to do Up the Down Staircase, That Cold Day in the Park, The Fox. The Fox was with Cure Delay and a lot of other great films. Uh, George Siegel, who played Nick, he was in um, the next film after this one was um, The Killer Memorandum. That was a well done film set in Germany, Berlin, uh, you know, a spy thriller. Oh, yeah, with that. Uh, doubles back to um, Richard Burton and uh, The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, which is the John Le Carre novel they made into a movie. He was the star, and that was with Claire Bloom. Oh, yes, yeah, so, like, that, that's while... This was 65. He was married to Liz Taylor, working with Claire Bloom, who was his ex, uh, one of his many exes. <laughs> But, uh, you know, Liz didn't like that too much. Actually, Liz doesn't like to be, she'd like to be called Elizabeth, not Liz. <laughs> but for the, you know, for convenience sake. Um, anyway, yeah, so that film won a bunch of Academy Awards. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? You know, it created this atmosphere, like this dark atmosphere. And it's supposed to be about, like, American life and how uh, messed up it is. I mean, but I, I just thought it was well done in every, every way, you know, the directing, the acting, the script. You know, the script is always important because, like, the VIPs had good actors and a terrible script. But anyway, um, next after that, let's see, what was... After uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, the next Liz and Dick film was, uh, let's see, the train, oh yeah, Taming of the Shrew. And that was a great um, William Shakespeare play they made into the movie. Actually, we, I remember we saw that in uh, drama class in high school. They showed it on one of those 16 millimeter projectors. Um, yeah, that's that. I guess that was my first real introduction to Liz and Dick, the that this film, but you know, which but then I saw it later, of course. Uh, yeah, and I became a kind of a shake, I went through a Shakespeare period where I was really into Shakespeare for a while, <laughs> you know, and I, you know, went through some of the major plays, but um, yeah, that was a good. That was a well done production. Uh, Fra oh yeah, that was Franco Zeparelli. Uh, and his next film was Romeo and Juliet, which was another one of my favorite films of all time. I mean, that was the 68 version. Well, started filming in 67. That's the one with Olivia Hussey and uh, Leonard Whiting. And they, that's one of the only films where the ages were correct. She was like 16 and he was like 17 <laughs> when they made the movie. Um, but anyway, yeah, Taming of the Shrew was a well done film. Uh, a lot of people in this, during the 60s with the, uh, mod, in the, you know, the modern era, that modern mentality, they didn't like Zeffirelli going back to this, to Shakespeare. Some people didn't. Because you know it was old fashioned values and stuff. The the wife must submit to the husband. That's what this this film, this play was about. Um, when women's lib was was all the rage, or is starting to be. Uh, after that, um, reflect. Let's see. Liz did Reflections in a Golden Eye with Marlon Brando. That was without Richard Burton. They did Doctor Faustus together. That was a play 
one of those weird plays. Yeah, yeah. This they did some of these art films. The comedians. <laughs> it was weird. It was because it was set in Haiti, and they were like supposed to be these rich people in Haiti, the poorest country in the world. <laughs> that was kind of ironic, but interesting. You know, interesting、uh, film. But the next one. Which a lot of people you either love this one or hate it. It's called Boom, and it was based on the Tennessee Williams play "The Milk Train Doesn't Stop Here Anymore,"、uh, which I actually saw off off Broadway、uh, once a long time ago. But、um, yeah, this was another atmospheric art film. It was set in、uh, a Greek island, or was it in it? Yeah, actually, actually, is it Sardinia? I think yeah, that was the、uh, Italian island. Had a Greek island feel to it, but、um, yeah, everything was whitewashed, and I mean the buildings and stuff. And yeah, it had a lot of atmosphere. It was I thought it was very well done, and it's been, you know, at the time it was a throwaway film, but now it's re it's been rediscovered as a sleeper,、uh, forgotten classic of sorts.、Um, Yeah, it's another one where it just had a great atmosphere to it.、Um, Liz Taylor is on this island by herself, supposedly dying, and、uh, Richard Burton comes to visit her as a stranger, <laughs> and goes on from there. Yeah, it's surrealistic. It's a realistic type film. That's what you know. So they were like cutting edge back then, ahead of their time. And、they wanted to do, you know, experimental type stuff.、Um, after that, Liz did the only game in town, a throwaway film with、uh, Warren Beatty, and、uh, they didn't. Oh yeah, then they, you know, then the seventies hit. They got divorced. They did some stuff on their own, and. But then they got back together, and then they got divorced again. <laughs> But yeah, I think Liz and Dick were the marriage of the decade, the 1960s. And then they, oh yeah, 1970, they appeared on the Lucy Show together, a famous、uh, episode where they, you know, Lucy doesn't know that Richard is Richard, <laughs> so she says, "Are you English?" <laughs> And you know, Welsh people hate the English, and they hate to be known as English. But you know, and then she, Liz gets her, Lucy gets Liz's ring caught on her finger. It's one of those sitcom type situations. But you know, because it was Liz and Dick, it was、uh, well done. And that was the 1970 episode. Anyway, I think I'll leave it at that for now.、Um, This is the first episode, and I know it's kind of a train wreck with the audio. I'm still getting that together, but anyway, thanks for listening. And next time I'll have another '60s theme, maybe Charles Bronson in the '60s, maybe Rider on the Rain.、Uh, but you know, I will go off on tangents.、Uh, you know, talk about other things, philosophy, whatever I want to. You know, I'm not going to limit myself. But anyway. Thanks for listening. Have a good night.